This video is made possible by the following mad lads. All their awesome gear they supply to me can be checked out in the description below. Hey guys, Talkie Boy here, and welcome back to another video. Now, today's video is going to be slightly different from my usual talky, drivey, shouty, crash into wall -y content. This is more an opinion piece uh, on the current state of iRacing and what uh, I think needs to be improved. Now I say I, I should say we, because I'm being joined by my boy, Stephen J. Bailey. Say hello, Bailey. Hello. I never call you Stephen or Jay. I always call you Bailey. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to call you Stevie for the rest of this video. Oh, How about that? God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the reason why I've, uh, I'm doing this with Bailey is one, to have someone to bounce off. I always think that uh, Bailey is the Brist uh, Bristolian uh, ying to my southern softy yang. So... Um, Whenever I have something to moan about, he'll, he'll tell me to shut up. And usually we'll get a, a good final uh, thought or opinion based on that. So that, that's why he's here. And also because, uh, you know, we're sim racing sluts. We've, 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 we've been around the, you know, around the, the town a couple of times. You know, we've uh, extensive history in R Factor, RF2, especially Bailey. He's been, you know, since the dawn of sim racing, he's pretty much been, <laughs> been around. And we've also put, uh, you know, about a year and a half of solid endurance racing into iRacing since the uh, Audi R18 came out. So we, you know, we, that, that's, that's our credentials. Just so you know, we aren't just randomers getting mad at something because uh, it's not gone the way we wanted to do. Just more uh, sim racing enthusiasts who think there is room for improvement. It's also worth saying that this is not going to be a video or a conversation that is just going to be completely hating on something that's not how we've ever done things you know we're first of all we are incredibly passionate racing enthusiasts and that extends to sim racing we want to see everything succeed at everything in sim racing so if we think there's something that maybe is holding something back then you know we'll we'll pick up on it and try and think of a way to fix it and this is kind of what that video is going to be now, to get into the video, the first thing I want to talk about, and probably the thing that sparked the idea for this video, is the more recent special event in iRacing, the Spa 24 Hours, which unfortunately has been another special event with another set of issues that go along with it. I want to start off with a positive, though, and say that in terms of viewership, I think, anyway, that the Spa 24 was probably one of the most successful sim races ever. I think I'm fair in saying that, I think, in terms of how many people were watching, you know. I, I think at one point, iRacing was somewhere around 10th or 11th in Twitch in, in, the, in the game for viewership, which is absolutely insane for a simulator, given that, you know, a year or two ago, um, that would just not be possible. You know, I remember when I started streaming back with Matt Malone in the Grip TV days, and we'd lose our shit with 50 viewers, and now, <laughs> you know, we're, we're getting these thousands of viewers at time. It's, it's absolutely mental. And also having... Yeah, that was helped, of course, by having two current F1 drivers taking part in the Spa 24. It really was fantastic for sim racing, made even better than that, that they actually uh, came off with the win in the end. Um, but of course, having these F1 drivers involved and all these new eyes and viewers watching the event, <sighs> more eyes, some, some of them may have been a bit confused with what they were seeing in terms of how the racing was uh, taking part. So let's, let's dive into the issue with the Spa 24 quickly. And that was the um, the mistake with the instant uh, limit. So most special events are split into two or three splits to try and account for different time zones. There were two splits at the Spa 24. The first split uh, started at what 1 a.m. I think our time. It was basically for the Australians and whatnot. One, one GMT that was in the morning. Well, yeah, yeah well, one GMT. So. And that was for the Aussie guys and people on that side of the world. And they were very much surprised when they logged in to uh, to, to the session. You know they signed up got their, their car involved and to see that there was a incident limit of 44x now let's very quickly kind of break down what that means to some people who might not know what the hell we're talking about um i racing has essentially an automated stewarding system which is the incident limit system uh, if you run wide at a corner or take a shortcut you'll get a 1x uh, for an off track it's called and if you lose control of the car you spin which i do very often you get a 2x and if you uh, punt someone, which I do even more often, you get a 4x. And you're probably thinking, well, why does that matter? People aren't going to be driving around and going off track on purpose. Uh, unfortunately, Spa is, I think it's fair to say, renowned for its off tracks. Um, they yeah. just don't really make any sense, do they? <laughs> well, they, they are, let's say they're rather inconsistent in that some places it's extremely harsh and others like for example on the exits of 
some of these corners that were abused even more than usual, it's quite lenient. Let like you go over the top of Radion, it's you've got to be well over that curb to, to Which get I was. the one X. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That's, you know, Blontimon, you've got to go quite a, you know, a relatively long way out to get that. Same out of Stabilo and so on and so forth. But like the inside of what's now known, what's now called X, what's no name. It, it seems like you look at the apex of that corner and you can pick up a one X. That's, it can, it, 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 yeah, it can be very it's, tricky. And I think this, the, the word is just inconsistent. And yeah. there isn't really anything to tell you where that limit is other than going no. and finding the off track. And, um, you know, unlike the top split, not everyone in iRacing is that professional driver who can run round and run that flawless lap, lap after lap after lap. You know, I'm definitely not that. Um, Bailey is a bit closer to that than I am. But... Even even with the you know the great skill of Stephen J Bailey, we're, we're, we we still pick up off tracks. We still make mistakes, and at Spa, it's you're very harshly punished, especially over a 24-hour period. So yeah. I think we worked it out. It was something like you could get one off track every 35 minutes, 40 minutes, I think, with that 44 instant limit, which round Spa is incredibly difficult. Yeah. And of course, needless to say, it ruined the race for a lot of people. Who had signed up so the instant limit was meant to be set at 300 which i think is more than fair um for spa um but due to some sort of was it like a binary overflow is that was that what you it, that, that's that's what uh, greg said it was yeah. binary overflow and others said uh, something to do with integers and clever things like that that's far too good for my brain yes. <laughs> so essentially the back end of iRacing racing just didn't quite understand that we wanted more than 256 or 255 sorry instant. Yeah. so it goes oh christ two, uh, 44 it is um, which I am absolutely stunned happened because it just shows that it was not tested. Like there, no one at any point went up, went okay. Well, we set up the instance. Let's just make sure it works. That is like that is anything 101. Whenever I do a stream, I tend to make sure things work. And when I don't, they don't work. Funnily enough, because it's not tested. <laughs> you, you got you got to test yeah. stuff, you know. And especially at this level where people are paying so much money to to get involved and. You know, I think out of the 40-odd cars or 50 cars that took part in that race, something like 15 or 16 managed to finish because the rest were just DQ'd, which is a really is a shame for a lot of people who would put in a lot of time and effort to firstly practice for the race and also putting aside time for 24-hour race is difficult if you aren't yeah. someone like me who is, you know, literally, this is this is my job. But, you know, but in, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the 0.1%. No, no one else is like that, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, in the end, I think it was um, 26 out of 88 cars that signed up for the for the race. I think there were there was splits of 44, and yeah, you're looking at over a, a a quarter of the people that signed up. And then, of course, you get your usual retirements through crashes and things, which you get in endurance racing. That that's that's a lot of the field that <laughs> to yeah. re to retire like that. It's Definitely, you know, disqualified and... just. You know, and again, I think the argument of like just don't do that is not good enough um, because no. again, we aren't pros. It's a race. Think, yeah, it's, it's a race. You're going to be well. pushing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not. You, no one is that good. Uh, not even the pro drivers are going to get round without that. But let's now no. move on to that actually because we've spent a bit too long talking about the 44x. Um, <laughs> in the second race, the race that I took part in and DHR and you know the majority of people took part in because I kind of think that the special events are you know, usually more filled by the European uh, bracket than anything yeah. else. Um, they iRacing didn't really know how to fix the issue, so they just took off the instant limit, um, which around Spa is a terrible idea because people abuse it. Um, now, I, what I would suggest you doing, I, I can't really show it on this because it's not my content, is go and check out some of Lando Norris's stream um, on Twitch of the 24, and you'll see what I mean. Um, people were really abusing the track limits because they could, um, and that... I'm not sure what that would equate to in terms of lap time, but I think, as Bailey said to me earlier on, if it wasn't quicker, they wouldn't be doing it. Um, and it's it's a very it's very difficult. How how do you approach this? Because there is there is a um, a penalty for doing that if you get too many off tracks. Your license uh, gets affected. Your uh, your rating, which allows you to drive certain cars. What was it for, like Max or Lando? Like they went down to, from like an A license to like a D something. I think it was. Yeah, it, it was like a D and a really low D license, <laughs> like one point something or other. It was. And, they, and the thing is, they weren't even the worst. They were far from the worst that were out there. It, it, <laughs> you had some teams that had, 
I'd say a handful that had over 2,000 incidents as a team. You know, they had less than 1,000 as I mean, a team. I mean, to put that into context, I, we we didn't drive the cleanest race in terms of off tracks. And I think our total was something like 180, something like that, at the end of the race, yeah. which is still a lot um, for any race. But at Spa, you know, it's it's okay. Um, but the, the problem is with this is that because of how iRacing have approached it and gone, well, there's no instant limit, that essentially goes, well, if you're okay with the penalty of getting your license hit, then it's free game. Um, it's very much a case of don't hate the player, hate the game in this instance. And iRacing definitely dropped the ball with that because there were some some people who just didn't care about the license who was going out there. I mean, I was following a couple of people in my race and they were just taking every off track they could just to try and extend the track and carry a bit more speed. And then there were people I guess like myself who were trying their best to kind of not do that but then i didn't feel the pressure to stay within the white lines if i was making yeah. a mistake like at blanchemont for example a couple of times i would hit the curb on the inside and instead of slowing down as i should have done to stay in the white lines i just went no you know what there's no penalty for this really and just accelerated yeah. out the corner and carried the speed anyway which um you know you can argue isn't really the the best attitude but that's that's kind of what it was if but it's what promoted, isn't it? That, that's the yeah, if, if, if you present the driver, any driver, who wants to go quickly with an opportunity to go a bit quicker, they're going to take it. Yeah, as I said in my, my Twitter uh, ramble the other day, it, it's up to the organisation to set the limits and then enforce the limits, which, OK, you could argue it does sort of enforce it by saying, oh, this is an off-track, you shouldn't really be here, but then I racing don't really do anything about it like well let, let's talk about that a bit shall we shall we go into that and say what could have been done about it what what can we do to prevent that because although it, it definitely is not my job and it's definitely not your job bailey to present a solution to this because we're <laughs> just customers um yeah let's let's I'm, try let's try and think of one anyway because you know that that's let's try and be constructive with this um and i think the easiest way to have uh, prevented this and it would only be for top split I think because this is not realistic of a solution for uh, for every split there would just be too many people involved is a live steward a live it's steward life. for the top split yeah a, a live steward would yeah. I'd, I'd always be in favour of a live steward in the top split events especially after a, uh, another special event we might talk about later but um, it would at least they could at least keep an eye on incidents if nothing else um, I think track limits it like as long as if they had the ability to give penalties out for constant abuse, it would tell everyone like, okay, look, we can't keep on doing this. You know, it would basically police itself from then on. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. And the reason why I say it should be with the top split is because of the amount of eyes on it. You yeah. know, that is the broadcast of race. You don't see race spot doing anything apart from the top split because i mean why would you you want the you want to watch the best go around right not, not the second watching best. the standard there is yeah, setting yeah. the standard for everyone else to... exactly and if you're seeing you know max verstappen and lando norris who well that their credentials speak for themselves you haven't even got to talk yeah. about it you know <laughs> yeah going out and doing that well that well lando's doing it max is doing it i should do it you know like Good enough for me absolutely uh, that, that's pretty much it and so I, how is that something that you approach in the future just test the bloody thing like yeah. but you, you, it's a bigger it's a big event a lot of money goes into it some people buy a car and track just specifically to do the spa 24 hours and for a service that you know we worked out was it 110 dollars a year if you don't worry this, right this, now, this yeah. is this is without promotion i know you can get it a bit cheaper if you hang around for black friday and stuff like that but 110 dollars a year if you don't do that and you know you're you're paying for the car you're paying for the track at a minimum if you somehow get into the race you know that's 150 dollars or so maybe a little bit less than that to get into this um to this race if, you, if you're paying for the course of a year you know actually, no, that's not right but you know what i'm trying to say yeah. um it's a lot of money to get into this race and to have it just not kind of work or not be tested it kind of just shows that um either i racing don't value that uh that customer or that person coming in or they simply don't have the resources to do it which in another way is saying well why not you know you should have the resources to deal with a race like this especially as unfortunately it's not the first time we've had issues with special events no i mean this is in terms of special events alone i think this was the fourth error in with instant limits and it's the fifth error overall that i can remember with instant limits um there we had 
Le Mans first split last. It always seems to be the first the first time slot that gets <laughs> that gets screwed a bit. Um, yeah. They had they were down to 50x at Le Mans last year as opposed to 100x. Which Le Mans it is doable, but it's it's still another error. This year Le Mans there was supposed to be a 100x limit. There was none at all. Um, and of course last year Spa when. It, as I understand, there were warnings about like, what would happen if there wasn't an instant limit implemented, and it didn't get implemented. And sure enough, <laughs> you had people doing exactly what they did this year in the end. Yeah, so, I mean, what can we say apart from like, there, there needs to be either um, someone, it needs to be, I think, in my opinion, someone's role at iRacing to, to sort this stuff out. If, if, if there is someone doing that, sorry, you're not doing a good job at the moment. It needs to be given to someone who is going to do these tests and make sure these things work because it, it kind of it taints the experience a little bit you know because yeah we, no, we, as, as i said at the start we're all racing fans right you know we we, yeah. we are lucky that we have a bit of software that allows us to get this close to doing all these events in real life you know it's it's always going to be a simulator for a lot of us because yeah. you know that, that's kind of how it is um and the frustrating thing for me, and I guess for you as well, Bailey, is that it's so close. Yeah. It just needs a little bit more, and and that little bit more is easily attainable. That's just where like it comes down to attention to detail. Yeah. And uh, kind of effort on their side. It kind of feels like iRacing racing maybe not living up to that at the moment. I think it's on that front where where iRacing racing is so automated. And let's be fair, it works. For the well. vast yeah. majority of the year, when you're doing your regular weekly races or, or whatever, but when it comes to these special events where there's a little more attention to detail required, it keep on falling down, which is what's frustrating. You know, it, it's when you come from a league admin background like I did in R Factor and stuff, you, and you need that little bit more attention. You, you test things, you double check your numbers, triple check them, whatever. You make sure that they're right, especially when you've got this many eyes on you. It's basic things, really, isn't it? It's just, it's just yeah. basic stuff you're doing. Um, well, I think like if, if a league admin can do it who's not getting paid or anything like that, there's no excuse for mm. them to not get it right. 100%. And I'm going to use that actually to transition a little bit into uh, away from Spa, just to kind of uh, round off this video, and talk a little bit about the live stewarding and, um, again, this kind of attention to detail. Let's talk about the Porsche Super Cup. Um, <laughs> now, again, here is an absolutely great event in iRacing. Massive, massive prize money on offer. Was, that, was it a 300 grand prize pot or something like that? I um, can't remember the numbers exactly, but it's, it's for, for, for iRacing, it's the biggest one that I'm aware of, or certainly on the road side of things. Yeah, definitely. Something, um, something incredible. Something that actually gives people like a reason to sit at home and practice, you know, like um, to, to go and find that money. And from what I hear, it's been a little bit, well, not, uh, <laughs> not stewarded. Uh, it's just it's, been a bit weird. As I understand that there are things that happen post race or whatever that's something like I don't know, just make license points. Into. I'm not 100% sure, so I, that's not. It's not really fair for me to comment on that. But what I can comment on is what I see with that series. And Silverstone was was better, but in general. The driving standards in that series have been laughable. It's been no, some of it's been no better than watching like some of the 50 split ILMS races you know, with people that you know, aren't used to cars coming up behind them at a ridiculous speed or whatever. You just, you've seen so much, so many people getting turned, so many incidents, accidents, and this is all in a series that has this prize pool and money for winning races. This is where, <laughs> yeah, this is where sim racing gets a little bit something that I'm I don't like about sim racing and um, people often ask uh, I think both you and me Bailey like do you get paid for winning races do you get paid to actually race and obviously the answer is no we I wish I mean like <laughs> for, the, for the actual racing itself we, we get nothing you know I'm lucky enough to make a, a career out of the other side of kind of, of broadcasting it but for the actual racing there's no prize for us and that's how I like it I don't know about you Bailey but I, I have no interest in taking part in anything that has a prize because it starts promoting driving like this i mean let's be real okay i mean bailey maybe not because bailey is the you know the lawful lawful good of the world but <laughs> but, but for myself as uh, not quite that <laughs> up to that if it's the last corner of the race and turning the guy in front of me is the difference between me winning 50 grand and 100 grand guess what i'm gonna do 
Yeah. I'm going to turn him, and I'm going to get 50, be 50 grand like, richer, you know. If even it, if it means starting for the back of the grid the next race or something, yeah, what if, are you going to do? Like, if, 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 there's, if there's nothing there to stop you from doing that, I say, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to have to, you know, you can, you can, there's always a way to turn someone without making it look like you meant to do it, you know. Yeah. Um, I, w I would do that because it's like a hundred grand. Who's going to say no to that? And that's, right. and that's the problem with this is that um, if you're going to have such a big prize, because 300 grand to everyone is such a lot of money. Like it's it's yeah. not like winning 100 quid for a race, you know, it's or winning, not even winning 500 quid for races. It was like 15 grand, something like that, a race. I don't know. I'm just trying to guess what the figure is. No, it's, I, it's, I, think it's, I think it's like a thousand. I, I need to look that up, really. Well, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of money. It's, not, it's, a, it's money that would make yeah. a great big difference to me, yeah. I can tell you that. No, I'm, I'm, putting, I'm putting numbers out my ass, but you, you, you get the yeah. idea. Like, it's still a lot of money, and people are going to fight for that. And it, it, if you're not having a live stewarding in that series saying, no, don't do that, then guess what? That behavior is going to continue, and it's going to be a big series, and everyone's going to laugh at it. I remember. Was it Mid Ohio? I think it was being the, like, the most hilarious race I've ever seen. And then someone told me, "Oh, this is the Porsche Supercut race." I'm like, is it? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that that, that Mid Ohio was a uh, Mid Ohio and Watkins Glen were uh, mm, banter, banter, mate. Solid banter, thought it was. One way of putting it. <laughs> um, but you know, for all for all we've you know kind of pointed out some of the issues with our racing, there is no doubt in me that iRacing is or has in the last year or so just cemented itself as it is the sim to be you know it is the most popular i think the most profitable um you know you can talk about physics and whatever uh till you go blue in the face but you know that they're a lot better than they used to be mm -hmm. there's still room for improvement but as a complete package iRacing is the best out there you know we've, we've been quite severely i think let down by acc and their online system i think we were expecting an oh, iRacing s s system we didn't get it so you know i'm not really interested in lobby racing uh, r factor 2 as much as you know I, ha I used to have a lot of love for that game it's just got to the point now where it is such an ordeal to get anything working i, I went back to try rf2 the other day after playing iRacing and the amount of like faffing about you have to do to get anything working is is frustrating i don't want to spend 20 minutes setting up the buddy sim and to get my direct drive wheel working etc every time i can pop into iris and it'll work you know and yeah. so. you know like a, a great um i won't go into it too much because i get a bit off topic but a great um example of that is the iRacing uh sorry the r factor 2 driver swap versus the iRacing driver swap r factor 2 driver swap you have to Buying two or three different buttons, you have to make sure a connection rate that is set when you're going online at the right connection speed or whatever. You then have to pray to whichever deity you believe in that the AI won't take over the car, which it does very often. And then um, hopefully the, there's no connection on the other end. In yeah. in uh, in iRacing, you press a button. Yeah, I mean, in fairness, I, I say in fairness with RF2, it is, it is just a one button you need, but you still need to hit that button to ride a spectator. The driver in the car needs to select your name in the menu on a menu where it pops away from the driver's name to change very quickly. It's like, well, it's um, like, yeah, weird automated thing where it goes, it doesn't yeah. want you to hover over this for too much longer. So, and it never used to do that. Yeah, so <laughs> imagine in iRacing you're, you're changing your tyre pressure and you're on the setting and it just pops the next one for no reason. That's basically what it's like, it does that for, I don't mean, like, it's a weird bug in the UI or something. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's just simplicity and I think. And again, the reason why you know, we're sitting here and talking about this is because we care deeply for, for sim racing and we just want it to be that extra bit. And I think it's very much within the potential of iRacing. We've got a new damage model coming soon as well, which will put to bed a lot of the issues that we've had as LMP1 drivers with floor damage and you know replacing parts in the car and seeing the hilarious bent carbon fiber wings. You know, I mean, iRacing, uh, uh, many things, including the discovery of bendy carbon fiber, which I think is a fantastic discovery for, <laughs> <laughs> for motor racing. I feel like F1, F1 teams are quite like that. Yeah, for <laughs> Formula One hates them, you know. Um, but uh. it's, you know, they're, they're, it's, there's always progress being made, but there's just that attention detail I think that just needs to be put in to really cap it off and make it something very special. Well, I think that is everything we've gone over, Bailey. You know, we've been a bit more structured this time. We definitely haven't recorded this video once before. No, um, no. Anything Professionals. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Um, anything you want to add in before we end this off? Um, oh, I, like I say, this, this is, like we said at the start, this is, 
this is passion for us. This isn't. We're not just hating on it. We we want to see sim racing be the best it can be. And when it's so close, so close, it's so frustrating at the same time. Ah. Yeah. I mean, we'll we'll always be here regardless because. Yeah. You know, we're definitely not going to stop using the service. I still think for me that it's definitely worth the money, and that that's something that people will you know again talk about till cows come home or yeah. go to the pub, whatever they're doing. That's about time. Um, but yeah, it's just something that needs that little bit extra, and I think that it's possible. Um, but I'm very much interested to hear what you guys think. You know, the great thing about YouTube is we have a comment section, so I would love to hear your thoughts. Please try and keep it uh, civil. I know people get very passionate about their favourite Sims and their uh the money they've spent etc but uh, this is just really a thought piece it's not me saying or baby saying it should be one way or the other just our thoughts and how some of the things can be fixed if you enjoyed the the stream video whatever the hell this is i guess it's kind of like a talky with background i don't even know what i'm gonna put in the background yet but anyway if you enjoyed it <laughs> hit the like button if you really enjoyed it of course hit subscribe and that bell notification icon because that way you'll be notified of future streams and future videos a uh, big thank you to my patrons and to my sponsors and of course to stephen bailey for joining us thank you very much bailey great to have you here my pleasure. Take care. Have an awesome day. See you all next time.